Today I will discuss about fluid properties of oil and gas. When uh, you get oil and gas from reservoir, the reservoir fluid property will be changing because uh, there will be changing temperature and pressure. Uh, why the temperature pressure will be affecting? There are the different physics I will explain during this lecture. So, first assume that you have one Coca Cola bottle or Pepsi, whatever, right? And when you open the bottle, suddenly some gas will come out, right? If you jerk it properly, and gas will be splashing all around. So, <coughs> what happens in the Coca Cola bottle? At high pressure, you inject lots of carbon dioxide actually. Okay, so when you are injecting uh, or uh, mixing a very high amount of carbon dioxide in the water and you are giving pressure, then you can see only single phase fluid. But if you re remove the cap, so what happens? So that time you are releasing pressure, carbon dioxide moves out from the bottle. What is the reason? The reason is that free gas, free gas like bird, you cannot cage them. You, they want to fly, they want to dance in the air, in the atmosphere, in the sky, in the cloud. Okay. Air particle also will do the same thing. They will be doing Brownian motion instead of uh, uh, staying inside liquid uh, volume. They will try to come out if you release the pressure and they will try to dance in the atmosphere. So that is the main mission for the uh, air or uh, dry gas particles. And if you are forcing them, like you are caging bird in the uh, caging the bird, what, what happens? The bird will not be happy. Right, and if you open the door of the cage, it will be uh, going away, and it will be uh, flying in the sky. So here also, in our air particle, in our case, air particle will be uh, doing Brownian motion when pressure is released. Right. So when you pressurize uh, carbon dioxide and put into Coke bottle, it will be dissolved. But once pressure release, the gas will be going out. In our reservoir, let us say this is our reservoir and pressure uh, is let us say uh, 500 uh, bar, right? very high pressure. Uh, there, there will be several well bore where there will be high pressure well bore, low pressure well bore and high pressure, high temperature well bore is there where pressure will be like 400 bar or more and temperature will be like 150 degree centigrade or more. So, in that case, very high temperature, very high pressure, uh, the liquid and gas will be compressed and it will create single phase fluid many times, many times it will create uh, two phase fluid. Now, you take certain amount of fluid from here, let us 500 bar and 100 degrees centigrade uh, temperature or let us say 212 degree Fahrenheit, uh, Fahrenheit. And you take that uh, sample out of this well bore, okay, this is closed vessel let's say and it is uh, properly sealed so temperature pressure will not change and take that vessel out and slowly you release the pressure so if you slowly release the pressure like coca cola bottle you are removing so what will happen initially gas will go out from the liquid once gas has gone then uh, it will be uh, gas free liquid but temperature may be high again you reduce temperature and maintain normal atmospheric temperature and uh, in oil and gas industry we say standard temperature, standard temperature is defined as 14.7 psi, uh, psi pressure and 60 degree Fahrenheit, we do not say centigrade, we do not say Newton meter uh, per meter square, we say 14.7 psi, psi used for field application oil and gas industry and Fahrenheit also used in the field. So, standard condition this is 14.7 and 60 different. So, reservoir fluid, whatever you got, you took the surface like opening Coca Cola bottle and you are changing pressure and temperature. So, that time your gas will go out. So, how much gas has gone out? And because of pressure in the reservoir, pressure was high. So, gas uh, or oil both were compressed. So, on surface, the compressivity will be changing. And because of gas and oil ratio changed on the surface, so its viscosity will be changing, right? And how much fluid uh, is going out to the atmosphere, or you are taking it, fluid or air, or sorry, mistake. So, how much gas or free gas is going out from the liquid, you have to measure. Then, if you do not measure, the problem is that 
you have to design separate system you have to design artificial lifting system so when your reservoir is changing pressure with time so some reservoir pressure presently 500 bar 100 degree centigrade but in future let's say after two years the pressure goes down to 100 bar so in that case what will happen the whatever fluid was there liquid gas may be single phase because of pressure change it will be two phase flow when two phase flow is there then your viscosity will change your density will change and other fluid properties will be changed because of this change your artificial lifting system whatever mechanical arrangement you have done that may not work so you have to know the fluid properties what is there in the reservoir what is there in the surface and in between there will be pressure change actually when fluid is lifting from well bore uh, that reservoir sand face area to the well head so there will be pressure change why pressure change will be there because of hydrostatic pressure uh, if you see h rho g right h if height reservoir height uh, well bore height is h then uh, uh, pressure is h rho g now <coughs> your density changing i told g is not changing because it is universal constant uh, in si unit is 9.81 meter per second square and uh, in fps unit i think 32 lbm per meter square, second square uh, pound force uh, now h is changing so h is changing so rho changing rho changing means your hydrostatic pressure changing hydrostatic pressure changing means again viscosity changing density changing so that means whole well bore system or well bore mechanical system must be modified based on your pressure reservoir pressure change and you need to know fluid properties also why need uh, because if you do not know how much gas it is dissolving whether it can dissolve more gas or it can release gas if you release little bit pressure so all this property if you do not know then selecting or designing an artificial lift will be a difficult uh, difficult problem so in this lecture i'll try to explain different fluid properties uh, properties in the well bore and that same fluid if you are bringing to surface what will happen to the fluid uh, so there are several formulas some correlations are there several correlations are empirical correlations uh, designed from data reservoir data people will get and they will be testing in pvt laboratory pressure volume and temperature laboratory in many places in the world there will be laboratories so they will get reservoir sample that sample they will take to the laboratory and there will be gas chromatograph and other uh, instruments so there they will try to check the composition of the fluid the density viscosity uh, um, yeah this sort of parameters and how much gas will be going out how much gas it can absorb what will be the bowel point all the parameter they will uh, measure or then they will prepare chart and table and they will give to the other engineers who are relevant uh, to this work for example artificial lift people they should know the reservoir fluid properties uh, and when the fluid is taking to surface again same fluid how it will be behaving so that also they will be deciding based on the pvt analysis and in last lecture we have seen the phase diagram so whenever we are talking about this uh, whether gas will be absorbed dissolved or it will be releasing gas it will be based on the pvt uh, that uh, that is called phase diagram the phase diagram is like this i already explained i think this is critical point okay this is bubble point line this is dew point okay then uh, this is pressure this is temperature okay now let's say initially your reservoir pressure and temperature is here now slowly if you reduce pressure okay if you reduce pressure, uh, pressure because where it is producing fluid through the well bore right and because of that your pressure is changing so pressure changing and final uh, at the well head condition is here so this is two phase region okay so in well head you have two phase region uh, that condition temperature pressure so in this case what will happen so all the reservoir single phase but nearby well bore uh, nearby well head it will be two phase so because of this two phase the fluid property already changed 
now your whole system dynamics will change so mechanical designs uh, will must be changed so that it uh, this two phase will be accommodated there if you do not know this phase diagram and you are producing well bore and on surface you see lots of gases there and you are unable to handle so there will be a problem and again artificial lifting system for example you are assuming the 100 bar pressure is there single phase fluid and because of this phase change your pumping system let's say esp is there esp electric submersible pump is one artificial lift and the esp doesn't like gas now because of this two phase uh, situation creation you got gas okay because pressure low pressure created so the gas will be interfering the whole uh, pumping systems and it will create vibration and cavitation so the pump will fail okay so you should know the phase diagram before you select any artificial lift right and this phase diagram where, where did you get the reservoir people they will give you they will be doing the that pvt analysis and other analysis and do they will do lots of mathematical analysis also then they will give the chart and based on that you have to select your artificial lift okay we'll go next okay so uh, when you are discussing about fluid properties so there are several fluid properties you have to discuss first thing is solution gas oil ratio gor means gas oil ratio this is gas this is oil this is ratio okay so solution gas oil ratio or rs is v gas by v oil so let's say is you take certain volume of oil and gas okay uh, some gas is there some oil is there yeah. let's say you take certain amount of gas and oil mixture in a closed vessel now we create reservoir condition or you take that oil and gas mixture to well bore at reservoir condition is at higher temperature higher pressure so what will happen this oil will absorb certain amount of extra gas okay so how much extra gas is going so this is the that amount this is like volume of gas on surface condition and volume of oil right uh, okay so now the volume gas uh, uh, unit is scf and stb scf is standard cubic feet again i am uh, saying the def definition scf means standard cubic feet that is this is surface condition this is 14.7 psi and 60 degree fahrenheit temperature and oil is stb stock tank barrel stock tank barrel means surface condition means standard condition that is again 14.7 psi and 60 degree fahrenheit and if you are changing temperature pressure the things will change so whenever you are specifying solution gas oil ratio or other parameters you should specify temperature and pressure and if you are not specifying the density you are saying for gas and without specifying temperature pressure this is meaningless right but normally density for water we do not specify why because normally we assume this is an atmospheric condition but whenever you are talking about oil and gas oil and gas means i can assume this is reservoir condition someone can assume this is surface condition someone can assume this is in between somewhere so if you specify temperature and pressure then things will be easier for everyone now uh, this is the basic definition rs equals v gas by v oil uh, this is used for many uh, calculation purposes now rs is another formula is there so that is coming from pvt analysis actually gamma g actually the gas specific gravity specific uh, gravity of gas p is the psia pressure and api is api gravity i will define later this uh, definition api gravity api full form is american petroleum institute so what is api first i have explained api american petroleum institute actually they standardize things for example if you design on artificial lift and whether this design is following certain norms or regulations uh, let's say corrosive fluid is there or piping diameter is there uh, the norm says what should be the diameter what should be the material what should be the corrosive fluid criteria so all the things they will be specifying api documents okay so american petroleum institute they produce lots of documents lots of theories and formulas so that people can use uh, safely these are standard formula so for viscosity also uh, the gravity also american petroleum institute or api they have given what formula called degree api 
instead of uh, giving like density, viscosity, whatever we use in our physics class 7th, 8th physics books, uh, that definition will be there, but this is a little bit advanced related to uh, oil and gas specific applications. Okay. And API, I uh, will be using the term many times because American Petroleum Institute, they have given lots of standards and sizing. So, we will be using from their table. And if you are not using API standard, then you have to specify all the parameters, you have to justify why you are selecting certain diameter, certain material, certain thing. But if you are saying I am following a API instruction, that means the standard people will be using blindly. <coughs> now, uh, API is API gravity. V i t y and t is temperature, temperature in degree Fahrenheit. So, in uh, normally oil industry, we are using Fahrenheit temperature, not centigrade. Okay, and sometimes we use Rankine temperature also. Later we will see. Rankine means one Rankine equals 460 degree Fahrenheit. Density. Now, density we have already seen in our school books. The density, mass by volume. Here also same thing, but oil industry because this is related to more uh, mixed components, say different carbon C1, C2, C3, car small short chain hydrocarbon, long chain hydrocarbon is there. Then there are temperature uh, dependencies there, pressure dependency there. So, the density defined by API or they say API gravity they say and density normal unit is LBM per cubic feet, pound mass per cubic feet. And API gravity is 141.5 divided by gamma O minus uh, 131.5. So, gamma O, gamma O is a uh, <coughs> gravity of oil. So, and that, that is defined as rho density standard condition, rho W water standard condition. O means oil, okay, oil uh, gravity gravity and rho oil st st means oil density oil density uh, s i t y oil density at standard condition standard condition what is standard condition again i am repeating 14.7 psi 60 degree fahrenheit and rho water is water density and again this is also standard condition water normally we assume that is almost fixed density 1000 kg per meter cube right and there are several density correlations but here one correlation normally used by many people many authors so it is called Ahmed correlation 1989 has given like rho o equals 62.4 gamma o gamma o means uh, this is oil gravity and then rs solution gas oil ratio solution already defined gas oil ratio and gamma g gamma uh, gas viscosity gas uh, gravity and other terms here uh, t is again temperature degree fahrenheit okay now you can see the equation the correlations are very long and lots of constant terms are there in exam what i do normally i give the correlations but student must be able to understand the correlation and they must be able to using this one they must know the units maybe i will change sometime unit also so whenever you are solving any problem during uh, tutorial session we will go for some problems so the problem if i change unit then you have to identify that unit is changed you have to convert to the field unit or specific unit whatever required for this uh, equation then you have to solve if you are not changing then whole result will be wrong then you can get poor marks or i may not give the marks for wrong answer because you did not change but my intention was that whether you identify the unit or not if you do not identify and you solve it maybe approach is okay but my intention was to check your capability to identify the units part right so uh, that's why this uh, the, uh, I am focusing on this units and definition so that student will be familiar with units and definitions and how to convert it, how to reconvert. Uh, I will tell one story. I was working in the, in the United Kingdom uh, during 2008 2010 
for oil and gas industry and I was getting data from oil companies as Chevron and others and they were giving in field unit but in India we studied in SI unit basically in, in engineering we study everything in SI. What I did I prepared on Excel sheet uh, whenever I got data I will convert into SI unit I will do all my calculation design everything then whenever I will be delivering final result to the company I will be reconverting that one to field unit again why this company people will understand field unit not my SI unit. So, I will get field unit I will do all the calculation SI unit because converting reconverting will be very easy in SI unit. So, I prepared all my calculation sheet in SI final data they want like pump diameter or flow rate or everything will be in field unit. So, that way I maintain my several extra sheets and I delivered the uh, deliver the company our company uh, directors also they did not know what I am doing they, they they knew that I am giving this input I am giving this output ok. So, that is why you should know the conversion reconversion and you should identify which you need, you need to convert which you need you need uh, you need, do not need to convert. For example, if I give some temperature in centigrade, you must be able to convert into Fahrenheit. Okay, so that one I should not include in my class. I I hope. <coughs> now next is formation volume factor. Again, formation volume factor when you are talking about so volume term is coming and formation volume formation is term is there. Formation means reservoir formation. We are seeing formation means where oil and gas is there, where oil and gas is formed right that rock area that source area so this formation. So, formation volume factor of oil. So, volume term is coming that means some volume related issue is there right. So, volume reservoir volume and standard condition volume. So, it takes certain fluid and how much volume is there right. So, reservoir volume let us say RB sometimes we say reservoir barrel and standard condition means stock tank barrel STB right. Here uh, one thing I have to know, uh, I have to explain barrel, I think I did not explain. Barrel uh, sometime people will say uh, the term is BBL, if you read uh, documents they will be writing BBL, blue barrel or blue barrel. Why blue barrel? 1860 around when uh, US they were trying to develop oil and gas industry. So, initially they wanted to put oil in barrels and they wanted to transport, but many other industries they were using all similar sort of barrel, barrel will be wooden made actually. Uh, if you go to Scott and still you can see those barrels they are storing this alcohol right. So, this wooden barrel they will be putting oil and they will be transporting from one place to another place. Other industry they were using 40 gallon in one barrel. But oil industry they thought uh, because there will be evaporation and there will be leakage. So, make it 42 barrel, 42 gallons. So, in the standard format it become like this 42 gallons one barrel as per US gallon ok. So, it will be and uh, but other industry they were using 40 gallons for a barrel. So, 1 BBL for 42 gallons ok and why blue barrel? So, normally those uh, wooden boxes were colored in blue actually they say. So, that is why they put blue term but there is no meaning of putting blue but people are using BBL ok. And all over the world uh, whenever you see any news related to oil price going up or down. So, they will write barrel price goes up or barrel is down. So, how many barrels oil is getting produced 1 million barrel 2 million barrel. So, based on that news will be reported ok. This will be standard unit for oil and gas industry. So, it is not SI unit definitely right. So, you have to remember and newspaper people and all people in India also people will be understanding barrel. Uh, and if you say cubic meter or uh, meter cube per second or meter cube uh, it will be very difficult to understand whoever working in the oil industry they will understand only barrel ok. Now, formation volume factor again uh, you take certain amount of oil and uh, check the volume take to the surface check the volume. So, volume will change. 
So that is a formation volume factor, right? Now uh, the issue is that you have seen this phase diagram: uh, single phase, two phase, and pure gas or condensate area, right? In phase diagram, you can remember the phase diagram, right? Like this, and if you are having oil here, certain amount, and you are changing pressure, P T. So you are getting two phase or maybe single phase zone, right? If you are re reducing pressure so much that uh, it is becoming complete single phase gas or dry gas. Dry gas means there is no. Uh, here one term is there, dry and wet. Wet normally we say wet means uh, water related, right? But whenever you are talking about oil and gas, wet means wet by oil. As oil you take certain amount of uh, reserve oil, and you increase temperature, reduce pressure. At after a certain time, it becomes completely gas. But again, if you increase pressure and reduce temperature, some liquid will come. Liquid means oil that that will be called wet gas. This liquid particle is there. If liquid particle liquid means not water, it may be gas. Uh, I mean hydrocarbon. Okay. Now, uh, in formation volume factor, uh, if you see F V F. We can see formation volume factor F V F. Okay, um, and this is pressure P S I. Yeah, so we will not use bar or other unit or Newton per meter square. We will not use. We will use P S I because field unit people they are using uh, oil field people they are using this one. Okay, many times the uh, okay. Now you take say zero pressure or let's say one atmosphere pressure, and you have very high pressure twenty thousand psi, and it will be like this. It will be uh, okay. P B and okay. So initially, if you reduce, take certain amount. Of Fluid, oil, and gas mixture in reservoir condition, then reduce pressure. So when you are reducing pressure till it is reaches bubble point pressure. Bubble point pressure is single phase liquid you take and reduce pressure. So reducing pressure, reducing pressure, reducing pressure. At certain time, the gas trapped in the liquid will try to come out. One bubble created. So that is bubble point pressure. All right? The gas, uh, the liquid will start bubbling. Okay, so then formation volume factor will be increasing initially as pressure is reduced, that volume is increasing. Okay, after that, gas will get released from the liquid. Okay, bubble bubble point uh, reached pressure, then again you are reducing pressure. Reducing pressure uh, means more bubble will be coming out. Yes, all the gas in the liquid forcefully you put in what uh, liquid, so that gas will go out. They will fly. They will run. They will dance. Okay, so the gas will go. So that time your formation volume factor will go down. Okay, volume will go down, 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 down. It will be almost one. Okay, so formation volume factor uh, <coughs> of dead oil will be one actually. This is one, and pressure will be zero. Uh, this is one. Okay, one more thing. Uh, formation volume factor and uh, solution gas oil ratio that relationship figure is like this f v f and r s or solution gas oil ratio f v s means this is b o this is uh, and solution gas oil ratio the figure will be like this okay 